Welcome to SCED Live. Today is Thursday, September 15th. I am Maya Miskew, and here is what is making news now. In weather today, Toronto woke up to its first single-digit degree temperature since June. Today we expect to have a high of 18 degrees and a low of 13 degrees with sunny skies. We spoke to some Humber students to see what they thought of the change in weather today. Hi, I'm Maya Miskey. We're on site at Humber College Lakeshore Campus. I'm with Samantha, Samantha, Sol, and Samira, and we're going to talk about the weather today. So how do you guys feel about the change in weather this morning? I love sweater weather, so I was very keen on grabbing my sweater and putting it on. Your um, Humber sweater. My Humber sweater, of course. Yeah, and I kind of like the coolness of the weather. Mm -hmm. Eric, how about you? It's like a transition from summer to autumn, so I can see like the leaves like turning orange. It's like... It's like a blend of like summer and fall, so I like it. For sure. And this morning, when you guys got dressed and everything, did you check the weather before you chose what you were going to wear? Um, I checked the weather last night. Um, I commute from Kitchener-Waterloo, so I have to be prepared the night before. Um, and I saw that it was only going to get to 18 degrees today in Etobicoke, um, so I prepared um, a t-shirt and a sweater. Great. And now that the weather is getting cooler, how do you guys plan to stay warm? Um, sweaters when appropriate you know if you don't have a jacket I would suggest you purchase one because it's gonna get colder from here so yeah just making sure that I'm layering clothing so that I'm keeping myself uh, warm 10,000 layers of clothing <laughs> and vitamins Love vitamins <laughs> I also recommend appropriate footwear just like layering I wear lots of socks and big boots um, because the campus is quite large especially depending where you park um, so wearing the appropriate footwear really helps. Okay, thank you all so much. And again, I'm Maya Miskew. We're on Humber campus. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. As for our five-day forecast, we are seeing a high of 22 degrees and a low of 17 degrees with mostly cloudy skies tomorrow. We have a warm weekend coming up with Saturday showing a high of 24 degrees and a low of 20 degrees with partly cloudy skies. On Sunday, we expect a high of 26 degrees and a low of 20 degrees with an 80% chance of thunderstorms. Monday will continue the rainy weather with 90% chance of thunderstorms and a high of 23 degrees and a low of 17 degrees. Patagonia's billionaire founder, Yvonne Schwinard, is giving the entire company away to fight climate change. Srinard worked with his family to create a structure that will enable Pen Patagonia to continue to operate as a not-for-profit, as a for-profit company whose proceeds will go to efforts in fighting climate change. The family donated 2% of its stock and decision-making authority to a trust which will oversee the company's values and mission. The other 98% was donated to a nonprofit called Hold Fast Collective, which will use the profits to continue their mission to fight the environmental crisis and protect nature and biodiversity. That's all for weather. I am Maya Miskew, and here is Veronica David with news. Thanks, Maya. I'm Veronica David, and here's the news for today. An overnight collision between two tractor trailers leaves two males injured. The collision occurred around 2 o'clock this morning in Mississauga along Highway 401 at Mavis Road. One of the victims has been transported by air to a trauma center with life-threatening injuries. The other is being treated at a local hospital with unknown injuries. Halton Police announced that the 28-year-old international student injured during Monday's shooting is not expected to survive. The announcement was made this morning during a news conference at the Peel Police Headquarters where officials from both Peel Police and Halton Police provided an update on the investigation. The student was one of three victims of the array of shootings across the Greater Toronto and Hamilton areas. Toronto Police Officer Constable Andrew Hong and Milton Auto Shop owner Shaquille Ashraf are also the victims of the shooting rampage. The perpetrator, 40-year-old Sean Petrie of No Fixed Address, was shot and killed by the SIU. Multiple police forces are working together to further investigate the crime. A York Regional Police officer has died in a head-on crash in Markham Wednesday morning. Constable Travel Travis Gillespie was on his way to work around 6 a.m. in the McKenzie Drive East and Warden Avenue area before his Honda Accord collided with a Porsche Cayenne. He was pronounced dead at the scene. The second victim, a 23-year-old man, was rushed to the hospital. His condition is unknown. Constable Gillespie was sworn in as an officer in 2020. He is survived by his parents and his colleagues. Constable Gillespie is the second police officer who has died this week. 
The investigation into the collision is ongoing. Investigators are asking anyone with footage to contact police or Crime Stoppers. In the UK, thousands are lining up, some overnight, near Parliament's Westminster Hall to file past the coffin of Queen Elizabeth II, who is currently lying in state. This follows a procession that occurred on Wednesday when the Queen's coffin was transported from Buckingham Palace to Westminster Hall. Hundreds of thousands of people are expected to pay their respects to the Queen with lines spanning several kilometers throughout London. The Queen will lie in state for four days until the funeral this Monday at 6 a.m. Eastern Time. Russian P President Vladimir Putin meets with China's President Xi Jinping today and tomorrow in Pakistan. These world leaders are meeting for the Shanghai Cooperation Organization in Samarkand, an ancient Silk Road city. They will be joined by leaders from India, Iran, Pakistan, and Turkey. All the leaders have particular notions for the meeting. In particular, according to CNN, Putin wants to prove Russia cannot be isolated, especially as it becomes, as Moscow becomes more involved in the war in Ukraine. That's all for news. I'm Veronica David, and here's Maria with your entertainment. Veronica, I'm Maria Pimentel, and now for your entertainment news of the day. R&B singer R. Kelly has been convicted of producing child pornography and enticing girls for sex after a month-long trial in Chicago. The verdict comes two months after a federal judge in New York sentenced him to 30 years in prison for racketeering and sex trafficking. As of now, Kelly is still waiting for two more sexual misconduct trials. One will be in a state court in Chicago and the other will be in Minnesota. Now for some teeth news. Jessica Chastain and Eddie Redmayne push for equal pay in their Netflix film, The Good Nurse, premiere on Sunday at the Toronto International Film Festival. She thanked Octavia Spencer for opening her eyes to the unbalanced pay in the film industry. She also negotiated an agreement for another recent film where she did not get the same salary as her co-star. The Good Nurse is about a woman whose co-worker and friend may be poisoning the hospital patients secretly, which eventually put her life and job at risk when questioned by the investigators. The film will be debuted on October 26 on Netflix. Here's a recap of the Emmys in case you miss anything. Sherry Lee Rawl from Abbott Elementary won the award for Outstanding Supporting Actress in a Comedy and gave a very emotional speech dedicated to all the dreamers out there. This makes Rolf the second black woman to win this award. Squid Game became the first non-English language series to compete for television's top honor. Lisa won Outstanding Competition Program for her reality series, Lisa Watch Out for the Big Girls. Sandaya, who already is the youngest and second black woman to win Outstanding Lead in Drama, won her second Emmy for the role in Euphoria. And Jason Sudeisky won Outstanding Actor in a Comedy Series for the second consecutive year. As in every award, there was a little bit of drama. Jimmy Kimmel had to apologize to actress Quinta Bronson during yesterday's Jimmy Kimmel Live show after receiving backlash from social media for carrying out a dumb comedy bid for a bit too long, while Bronson gave her acceptance speech for outstanding writing for a comedy series. Bronson is the second black female writer to win the award. Now we're going to sports with Evan Graville. Thanks, Maria. Legendary tennis player Roger Federer has announced his retirement. The 20-time Grand Slam champion took to social media this morning to announce he was leaving the sport. This is a bittersweet decision because I will miss everything the tour has given me. But at the same time, there is so much to celebrate. The tennis world has expressed its support and admiration for Federer on social media, with his competitors and rivals sharing what he meant to them. Federer will play his final ATP tournament next weekend at the Labor Cup, which runs from September 23rd to the 25th. Toronto slugger Vladimir Guerrero Jr. became the youngest Blue Jay to hit 100 home runs on Wednesday with a first inning blast off of Rays pitcher Drew Bousmussen. Guerrero had been slumping for the first half of September, lacking the power that defined his 2021 season. Nonetheless, Guerrero hit the century mark for long balls on Wednesday, becoming the seventh youngest player in MLB history to hit 100 home runs and doubles. The Jays beat the Rays 5-1 on Wednesday with a dominant performance from pitcher Ross Stripling, who went six and a third while only allowing one earned run. The win has put the Jays one and a half games above the Rays in the AL wildcard race. The Jays finish up their series against Tampa Bay today at the Rogers Center with a 3.07 first pitch. The Minor League Baseball Association officially voted to join the Major League Players Association yesterday. 
The move comes after repeated calls for better housing, protection, and pay for minor leaguers. The MLBPA is now officially the bargaining representative for minor leaguers, which will allow them more leverage to make demands of team owners. While a collective bargaining agreement was just signed this past season, there will now have to be a new CBA negotiated to conclude the new members of the MLBPA. The Humber Hawks recognized two athletes of the week for September 5th through the 11th. Softball outfielder and pre-health sciences student Hannah Koziolik has been integral to the Hawks 4-0 start, with a 500 batting average and an OPS of 1.300. It's not just power of Koziolik, though. In a game against Lambton, she swiped a bag to become Humber softball's all-time stolen bases leader. On the baseball diamond, Aiden Murphy tossed a gem against Lambton, pitching the 6-0 hitter in program history. Murphy, who is a sports management student, made his first appearance for the Hawks since 2018 and struck out 10 while allowing just three walks. The next day he laced a solo home run against the Saints, showing his talent on both sides of the ball. That's all for sports. This has been Sked Live for Thursday, September 18th. For more of our stories, check out skedline.com. I'm Evan Gravel. Thank you so much for watching.